Okay, so January 2006, M1. Um, this is the very first one they ever did. Well, let's have a go at this. So, um, I'll get my pen out. Um, particle travels in a straight line during the time interval 0 to 12, where t is the time in seconds. This is the velocity time graph for the motion. Right, just looking at this, uh, it's starting at 10 metres per second and going back to minus 50, minus 5 metres per second. That means at this point here, um, when it's got to zero, it has changed direction. And then it's gone down to minus 5 metres per second, and it's slowing down again, up to 9, let's put 9 in there. And then it's changed direction between 9 and 12. So it's gone from where it started, uh, 4, 4 seconds, t equals 4. And then it's gone back in the other direction until t equals 9. And then it's gone back again in the other direction. Okay, so we need to think about it like that if we think about the velocity. So this is direction, we'll put that there in case we need it later. Right, calculate the acceleration of the particle in the interval 0 to 6. Okay, so we've got a straight line. Right, acceleration is metres per second squared. So if we think about it, if we've got velocity equals metres per second and we divide it by the time, that would be like times in by one over the time, you end up with your metres per second squared. So what we're going to do is the gradient of this. So we've gone 10 to minus 5, so we've gone minus 15 and we've gone 6 across. So the acceleration, <coughs> A equals minus 15 over 6 metres per second squared. Okay, part B, calculate the distance travelled by the particle from t equals naught to t equals 4. Change my pen colour. So, up to this point here, and that's when it changes direction. So again, thinking about what we've got, um, if you've forgotten which way round it is, if you just think about your units, I want obviously metres. So, if I think I've got metres per second, if I multiply it, by the seconds, the times, I just get my metres. So it must be the area. So I've got this triangle and I've gone four along, I've gone 10. So my distance, um, this is so part two, when you look back on it, equals a half times 10 times four, which is 20 metres. Okay, so what we know, if we go back to this graph at the top, is we've actually gone 20 metres up to that point. And then we've changed direction. Right, when t equals naught, the particles are a, which is why I've called it a. I've obviously done this before. Clo calculate how close the particle gets to a during the interval between 4 and 12. So if, um, if I look at it, I'm only going to go, actually, up to where the time is equal to 9, because then it changes direction again. So you need to think about it very carefully. And then what I'm going to do is the area of this triangle here, because we've already said the area gives us the distance. So for part three, the area, the distance, is a half times five, times five, because it's gone from four to nine, which is 25, half of 25, 12.5 metres. But I haven't quite finished, read the question carefully, because it said, how close does it get to A? So it was 20 metres away, so it's gone 20 minus 12.5, which is 7.5 metres away from A. So always read the question carefully. Have you actually finished it off after all that hard work? OK, let's have a look. Right, question two. Uh, figure two shows a light pulley string with an object of four kilograms. The string um, passes over smooth pulley, it's either end is attached to two light strings, but you see it's the same length. The strings are attached to horizontal ground or are each inclined to the fist. It's in equilibrium. Okay. So what information in the question tells you the tension is the same throughout the string A and B? Uh, well, it says, oh, sorry. So part one, you'd say, well, it says the pulley is smooth, so there's no friction. And the string is light. Oops. Because then we don't have to wor worry about the weight in that. So, and then whatever the direction, 
the tension is going to be the same in both strings. Okay, so that's really important. Okay, right, uh, part two. Okay. What is the tension in the string A, B? Okay. So, um, let's have a look what we've got. So, we've got this. We're coming down and we've got tension in both. We've got 20 degrees, 20 degrees. Here, we've got a weight of 4G. Okay. So, we've got a tension in both of these. Okay, so using Lamy's theorem, we've got F1 over sine theta equals F2 over sine theta equals F3 over sine, sorry, sine beta, uh, sine epsilon. So you can use that one if you want, or you can say the tension baby equals mg which is 4 times 9.8 which is equal to 39.2 newtons that's a much easier way of doing it okay um part three calculate the tension in the strings bc and bd so looking back bc this is what we're thinking of and bd Okay, so, right, so they are going to both be the same tensions, okay, so we've got, going back to this, part three, we've got, oh, I don't know I've done that, anyway, um, 2t cos 20 equals G. Okay, so rearranging that, you've got T equals 2G over cos 20. Be super careful with your calculations and your calculator. So you end up with T equals 20.9 newtons to three significant figures. Always just say to the examiner, write everything down if you need to. <coughs> On your calculator. Okay, question three. A force is given by uh, 3.5i plus 12j newtons where i and j are horizontal and unit vectors east and north respectively. So basically i and j as we'd expect. Calculate the magnitude of f and also its direction as a bearing. So literally we're just using what we already know. So f is in that direction so I've got 3.5 that way, I've got 12 that way. So using Pythagoras, the magnitude of f is the square root of 12 squared plus 3.5 squared, which is the square root of 625 over 4. And you should get that is 12.5 newtons. And then the angle, theta, so I've got tan theta equals 12 over 3.5, so you should get theta equals 73.739, um, but it did say a bearing, so again, really careful on the question. So theta is 73.739, but as a bearing, I'm going clockwise, so that's 73 point, oops, 739, so my bearing is that way. Okay, so I want to do 90 minus 73.739 and I get 16.3 to 3 Oops, significant figures. Okay, so again, it's just the end bits all the time about weeding it properly. Make sure you've answered the whole question. Okay, G is the force 7i plus 24j. Show that G and F are in the same direction and compare their magnitudes. Okay, so really you should just find that the um, angle is the same. Let's have a look. So we've got um, 
Or maybe we can just do similar triangles. We've got oops, 7i and 24j. And before we had, oh, 3.5 and 12. Do we need, even need to think about doing anything else? Because it's just a scalar multiple, isn't it? it the theta must be exactly the same. So they are similar triangles. Um, scale factor 2. So uh, the force must be 2 of your previous force. Okay. Compare their magnitudes. Yeah, so just G and F by just looking at G and F, you would say G equals 2 of F. The magnitude. Okay, so we always write a magnitude as that. Right, question 3. Force F is 9A minus 18J and force F2 is 12I plus QJ. Find Q so that the sum F1 and F2 is in the direction of F. Okay, so, right, we've got, it's just addition of vectors. So, part three, let me put, the, we've got F1 equals 9i minus 18j and F2 is 12i plus qj and what we basically want is them to have the same um, direction so um, as f so which was doo -doo -doo -doo, going back um, 73.7 the angle. Okay, right. Oh, hang on, I've read it. Uh, yeah, same direction. Yeah, not the same magnitude. Okay, so um, adding together, we've got 9 over 18 plus 12 over Q. Okay, so thinking about what we had before, um, when we thought about part two, that sort of led you into it, you know that if it's got the same direction, it's a um, similar triangle. So it's just a scalar multiple. So I'm just going to put A for the multiple of 3.5 over 12. Okay, so I get 21 over... Oops, didn't put the minus 18. Why am I putting a divide by? Hang on, sorry. Oops. Lost it. Sorry, I'm a bit of a learner driver with this. Bear with me. Right. Um, 21 over minus 18 plus Q equals um, A times 3.5 over 12. So, if you just look at the top one, okay, 3.5 times what makes 21? Well, actually... Um, 21 equals 6 times 3.5. So we need to say, replace this A with 6. Okay. And you get um, 6 twelves are 72. So minus 18 plus Q equals 72. So Q equals 72 plus 18. And whoops, Q equals 90. 